Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to Greece once again and this is yet another of the beers that I brought back with me from my recent trip over there. So for this one we're going to return to the island of Crete which I believe is the biggest of the Greek islands and we're having a taste of another beer from the Solo Beer Company. So for this one we're having a taste of the Askianos which is their porter and it comes in at 7% ABV and this is quite a highly rated beer this, it had 96 overall on Rate Beer when I checked out earlier and I think it was like a 3.2 or a 3.3 that it had on Untapped when I had a quick look there as well. So a very very highly rated beer and as I always say when you want to get a bit of a feel for how a brewery does things it's always good to try something from the darker end of the spectrum and something from the lighter end. So you've already seen me review the Psaki IPA so now you're going to see me review this guy from the, the dark end of the spectrum. So certainly looking forward to this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. The Greek reviews that I've done so far do seem to have gone down pretty well so I hope you guys watching over in Crete and in Greece are uh, what enjoying watching these reviews because I've certainly enjoyed tasting some of the Greek beers of course. So anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting of course just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website linked to my other reviews that hopefully I can do from solo beer at some point in the near future. There's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Greek beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to over the next little while of course and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway to tell you a little bit about Solo Beer then. So Solo Beer was founded back in 2015 by Ketel Yekin, who was the founder of the Nugna Au Brewery in Norway and he was responsible for building a lot of the craft beer interest that actually exists in Norway these days but he was formerly um, an airline pilot with Scandinavian Airlines before and also an avid home brewer and that was what led him to actually found his own company which became one of the premier uh, craft breweries in Norway of course. But the company are based primarily in Heraklion in Greece but they're also linked with a company that's called Great and gratification. So this is co-owned by Ketil as far as I can see and it's run by a group of Cretans who take care of a lot of the marketing and business side of the brewery as well. There was quite a few of them in there were sommeliers and uh, had managed restaurants and things like that from what I understand. But Grapes and Gratification own a vineyard in Alagni which is to the south of Heraklion and they started out con this the, the solo beer brand started out contact brewing at the Arundel brew, uh, Brewery up in Norway and um, before they started building their own brewery which started brewing their beers in in 2018 and that of course is in Alagni itself but they also produce wine in Alagni and this is using the native Plyto and Vidiano grapes and apparently they're experimenting quite a lot with uh, different orange wines and things like that as well so a really kind of interesting company of course knowing that uh, they were doing things like they were the first commercial sake brewery in Europe um, <clears throat> obviously Norway is a bit too cold to do wines and things like that. I think they were playing around with distilling different spirits and stuff like that and of course they were doing beers and stuff like that as well which was uh, which was really cool so it is really interesting <clears throat> to see that Ketel has gone to Greece and started doing uh, a little bit of wine making and, uh, and stuff like this which is very cool he's kind of created a new company that carries on the spirit of what Nugna uh, used to be of course so and these beers are really quite highly rated but you won't find these very often outside of Greece because I think Ketel has a clause in the contract that he signed with uh, Hans Abori from Norway that means he can't compete he couldn't sell these beers in Norway from what I understand but the ones he's produced under the solo name are pretty damn good which you would expect considering considering how good the uh, the Nugna Ur beers were. So certainly looking forward to trying something from the darker side of the spectrum because this is where Nugna Ur really used to shine, of course, with Dark Horizon and stuff like that. But certainly looking forward to this one. And as I say, I hope you guys enjoy my take on the beer. So that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now. We'll open up the beer and have a taste. But if you want to learn a little bit more about solo beer and grapes and gratification, check out the websites and stuff in the description below. And I'll also put a link to their Facebook pages and stuff like that as well. So yeah, let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open up. There you can see very very similar 
compared to uh, what was going on with the other one. Just different colours, of course. These beers are all different colours. Uh, you can see a little bit in Greek on the side there. The Rate Beer page actually does have the translation of this, so I'll just read it out to you quickly before we taste the beer. So it says, if you think that black beer is heavy and high in alcohol volume, thus not of your taste, our porter is about to change your mind. Askianos is a delicate beer with intense notes of chocolate and coffee. Pair it with vanilla ice cream and dark chocolate or grilled meat. So yeah, that's what they say on Rate Beer about this one as I say nine, it was rated 96 overall uh, there and I think on Untapped they gave it something like a 3.3 .3 or something like that so a very very highly rated porter and as I say this is a, a, a beer style that um, that Kato used to really shine at brewing so definitely looking forward to trying one of his new creations there you can see on the top of the bottle there the solo um, <coughs> the solo brewery symbol of course you can see the Sigma uh, I want to say the la yes, uh, the capital sigma, the O, I don't know what you actually call the O in Greece, is o that's not Omega of course, but then you've got the Lambda in there as well, but yeah, really nicely presented beer this one, so without further ado, let's get it out and get on with the taste, and as I say, really looking forward to this. Yeah, nice little bit of smoky opening on this one, and we'll get it out and into the glass, and I'll tell you something, you can smell some of the lovely, kind of um, chocolatey, and sweet malts coming off this beer already. So yeah, we just need to watch the head on this one I suspect. Might go a little bit crazy, so we'll just let it settle a bit before we put um, the other, the rest of the beer in. But yeah, as you can see, and as you would expect from this beer, it's poured a really nice, dark, ebony rosewood colour. And I will tell you something, you know, I had the Dark Horizon from Nigna U. Um, I think it was the Dark Horizon 5 quite recently, and this beer the aroma that comes out of this one smells ridiculously similar, to be quite honest, just from opening up the bottle there. But as you can see, and as you would expect, it's poured a really nice, dark, ebony rosewood colour. There's a solid, you know, a finger and a half of a frothy, I would say quite dark, a tan head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that um, of that head there. But you know, pretty much exactly as you would expect a porter to appear. It does look very, very nice. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. Oh yeah. So you know, that's a really beautiful smelling beer that as I say it reminds me a lot of these these um you know the original porters and stouts that you used to get from Nugna which you know isn't a surprise obviously but it's just it really smelling this beer is actually kind of quite nostalgic for me. It takes me back to like twenty you know twenty twelve or so when I was first kind of getting into uh 2010, 2011, 12 when I was really first starting to get into craft beer. And with this one you know it really just has that old school Nugna feel to it, which is lovely. So yeah, bit of roasted malt to this one, but it still has a lot of sweetness to it. There's a hell of a lot of high kind of cocoa chocolate to this. There's a little bit of lighter milky chocolate in there as well. Um, there's a little bit of a coffee note to it. It's quite a smooth coffee, I would say, to this one, to be quite honest. Maybe a little bit of brown sugar as well, like a toasted caramel, something like that. Yeah. Definitely a kind of toasted, uh, a really toasted brown sugar note to this beer. It's got an element of a kind of woody, um, slightly nutty quality to it as well, which is nice. But um, it's there's a lot of complexity to this, which is, is quite interesting. A little bit of vanilla, of course, definitely some kind of vanilla going along with that woody note. A bit of earthy hop and maybe a teeny, teeny little touch of a very slightly red fruity quality. But mainly, that that's very, very minimal, to be quite honest with you. But it smells like a lovely beer. There's a lot of complexity in this for a porter, although I would say this one has been in uh, the bottle for a year. These solo beers, for some reason, when I when I bought these from the Sorry Mum liquor store, they did have a little bit of a an a, a little bit of age on them. But when it comes to the porter, you don't you know you don't have to worry about that. Usually a year is fine with a porter, especially when it's up around kind of seven percent. It is a more malt forward beer rather than anything else, to be honest. So it's it's not too big a deal. But it smells lovely, this one. So, as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you have a taste of it. But let's get stuck into this one now. So this one is the Askianos, the Porter, from Solo Beer Company in Alagni on Crete in Greece. Let's get stuck into this beer. Slanja, Skull, Yamas.
the nostalgia continues. It really does. It's very, very... It really reminds me of the, you know, the, the original Porter beer from Nugna. I remember when I first tried um, one of the Nugna uh, beers in the, in the Brew Dog in Aberdeen. That must have been back in like 2011 or something. And it was just really, really bloody good. And with this beer, you know, it has much of the same kind of feel to it. It's, it, it's, it's really awesome that, to, to just taste a beer like this again. Yeah. See, in, in terms of a porter, to be quite honest with you, there's not many you're going to find that are better than that, to be quite honest. It's really, really well done. Um, the porter beer is not one a style that I drink all that often, to be honest. Um, but this, you know, when you come across a good one like this, it really is something special. And I have to say, this, you know, this is a bloody good beer. Let's, you know, let's make no qualms about this. It's an awesome awesome beer this one. Let's just get the rest of it out. Might as well. So you can see the head on this one is just going up a little bit. But this is a lovely, lovely beer. If you do get the chance to get a hold of some of these solo beers, particularly the dark ones, I would say have a go at it. They are starting to produce them on Crete now rather than in Norway. Like I was saying, it was the Arendal Brewery that they produced uh, these beers in originally. But this is really good. Carbonation on this one, of course, is just a little bit more active because it is a year in the bottle. Um, but yeah, it's an awesome beer. So let's let's crack on with this then. So in terms of the um, the malt base, then you've got a nice roasty black uh, malt backbone to this beer. You can feel that, and it starts to push its way out a little bit more as you go further and further into the aftertaste of this beer. You can feel there's a bit of that kind of dark brown bready quality. That blankets the middle of your tongue as well. The beer smooths out in the middle. Um, there's a sort of coffee. Yes. I want to say it's kind of a slightly earthy coffee, but there is almost a little bit of a floral quality to it as well. As I always say, I'm no expert in coffee, but I reckon there's a little bit a mix of earthy and floral qualities coming out of the coffee flavours um, in this beer. Um, in terms, I would say there's a high cocoa chocolate to this one as well. There's maybe a bit of a lighter milky chocolate towards the front of the palate. But the chocolatey flavours in this one for me are quite high cocoa. Um, and there's a little touch of brown sugar there in the middle of the palate as well. But really, it's leaning more, this beer is definitely leaning more towards the kind of roasty, black malt, bitter side of things in terms of the porter style. But it is a cracking beer, this. I'll say straight up with it. I can see exactly why it's it was so highly rated on rate beer. It's a it, it's just it's a cracking beer, this, you know. This is definitely this this beer for me could stand up with any of the porters that you would come across in Europe. But you know, when you consider who the brewer is, it's not particularly surprising to be honest. Um so yeah, in terms of the hoppy side of things then, the back corners of the palate, really nice big earthy quality there. Maybe a little touch of herbal quality to it as you come further forward along the sides of the tongue. That earthiness spreads all the way forward and then round the very front curve of the tongue, it's, there's maybe a little hint of, um, of grassiness there. And then as you just go behind the front curve of the palate, you get that little oily bubble. And there's a wee touch of a kind of red fruity note to this one, but not, it's, that really is kind of minuscule in the flavour to be honest. Yeah, there's a little bit of a, there's a very slight figgy flavour in there, maybe a little touch of a kind of candied red fruit. That kind of continues on into the aftertaste. That may well be down to the age of the beer, but it's not, it's, you know, it's not playing such a big yeah, role in terms of the flavour. The focus on this one is the roasty black malt, the kind of coffee flavours that are coming out of it, and the nice sort of earthy hop as well. But overall, you know, it's a really, it's just a really nicely done beer, this one. I think... You know, it's, as I say, it's not surprising when you consider who the brewer is, but it is it's absolutely lovely. As you as your mouth kind of opens up a little bit and um, adjusts to the flavours that are coming out of this beer, there's a little bit of a woody note comes out of it, maybe a little bit of a nutty quality to the aftertaste as well. But, you know, overall, it's just a really, really solid beer, and I'm certainly glad that I am... Um, 
that I got to try this one. It really is just pretty damn awesome, I have to say. So a big thumbs up to the guys at Solo Beer for producing this. It's, it really this this beer takes me back to the, the it's a kind of nostalgia beer for me because it takes me back to the very early days when I was first trying um, these original Ningna uh, beers. But yeah. It's absolutely cracking, so yeah, well done to the guys at Solo Beer for this. I do need to go and check out Crete sometime. It's supposed to be absolutely beautiful. I loved my time in Greece that I had already. I really had a very, very good time um, when I was over there. Um, but yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel of this one then, as you'd expect from the porter, it's a fairly light-bodied beer. It's maybe at the bottom end of mid-bodied in fairness. Carbonation on this one, I think, it is quite active, but I reckon that's because it's been in the bottle for a year rather than what it would be if it was completely fresh, but I think aging this beer a little bit has brought out, it probably will have brought out some of the kind of woody, nutty notes uh, to the flavour, so it does give the beer a little bit more of a kind of complexity, which is uh, which is, is really nice. I think that, that maybe suits it. I'd be interested to try a fresh one compared to this and just see um, exactly what the difference was, but I mean, in terms of uh, being a good quality beer, I think I think this aging it probably would enhance it a little bit. And um, in terms of the the mouthfeel overall, I would say it's quite an oily beer. This it's quite a nice oily port of this, but it does have a little touch of wetness, um, as you would expect from the style. The malt base has a really good balance between the kind of roasty bitter things and a little bit of the sweetness. It does lean more towards the roasty toasty side of things rather than anything else. But there is a little bit of sweetness there and the smoothness from the woody kind of nutty flavors as well. Nice little bit of hoppy quality to it. It does have a little bit of bitterness overall, but you know nothing to, uh, to blow your head off. There's a good bit of bitterness from the malt base and from the earthy hops in the back corners of the palate but as I say nothing that's going to blow the head off you um, and there's also a little touch of a juicy fruity quality in there as well but overall like I said it's a really really solid porter and um, I'm certainly glad that I got to try this. A very very kind of nostalgic beer for me this one but um, yeah I think that's a good place to leave it. I'm going to go out and sit in the sun and uh, enjoy the rest of this beer as it kind of as the sun goes down. I think that's a good way to kind of uh, to see out this one so yeah the Askianos Porter from a uh, solo beer in Alagni on Crete and Greece just a lovely lovely beer one that certainly takes me back to when I first started getting into this style properly so yeah let's leave it at that so once again thank you for watching my beer review until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from solo beer as well i will be returning to them for another one in the fairly near future i've got their imperial stout to review for you at some point but i might keep that for a little while and review it later on but once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff uh, and let me know what your favorite greek craft beers are it's been really cool to return to this brewery and i thank you for all the support that you show the channel so the askianos porter from solo beer on uh, in alagni on crete in greece a lovely lovely porter if you enjoyed the early nugna stuff then do make sure you check this one out I think it's quite hard to find this outside of Crete. But once again, thank you for watching and I will catch you guys soon. Yamas.